different. It's not the same. Okay, so here's the problem, but it's a little bit different. This problem is not on a rod. It's actually an infinite rod. And I actually had emailed David Trubach because, of course, I've seen this problem, but I'm sure there's an <coughs> application of an infinite rod. I don't know what it is. Um, so I asked David, and he hasn't emailed me back, but maybe I'll ask uh, Phil tonight. Is, is there a real application for an infinite rod? Um, and it's only got initial conditions. So we have the initial position of the displacement of the wave, and we have the, um, the derivative or the velocity of the wave given to us at initial time point. So no boundary conditions because it's on an infinite rod. This, of course, is the wave speed. And again, it's the same picture, except in both directions, the rod goes on, and you have displacement. So I, I got most of this from Chris Tis Tisdale's site, but you can get it. I think it's pretty, it's pretty, it's anywhere you look up Dahlenberg, you can find this. So the idea is to make a change of variables by letting p equal x plus ct and q let q equal x minus ct. Then p plus q, if you just add them together, you, you can solve for x, or you get x is 1 half p plus q. Likewise, you can solve for p minus q and uh, come up with a formula for t in terms of p and q. I'll let you catch up. So assume formally that we had the solution already and we made this change of variables. Um, then we could plug it into the equation and do some monkeying around. And the first monkeying around is to take that bracket expression and use that bracket expression to show that the mixed derivative of upq is equal to zero. There's a reason why, so hold tight. So I'm just taking the mixed partials. Okay, so what's going on here? Well, you have, if I want to take the derivative with respect to P, then that's the derivative with respect to X times the derivative of X with respect to P. These come from chain rule. This is called the total derivative. So we take the total derivative across. So the second term is the derivative of U with respect to T times the derivative of T with respect to P. And from the translation from the solution that we got for x and t, we can get those uh, inner derivatives. So we can actually calculate them, and they turn out to be constant. So far, so good? I saw from the problems that you already worked that you get kind of used to. I saw some eraser burns on there, too. So you know, so you, I had some eraser burns on this, too. <laughs> Start to lose track of things. So I can now pop those in the 1 half and the 1 over 2c. Okay, so there is that equation again. And now I want to take the derivative again with respect to q. And it's a little messy. So here we go. This first term, I take the derivative of this with respect to x, and I multiply it by the derivative of x with respect to q. Then I take the derivative of this with respect to t. Then I multiply it by the inner derivative of tq. Same thing with the second term. I take the derivative of the second term with respect to x. Then I take xq, and I add it to the derivative with respect to t, and I multiply by tq. So you taught all day, and this still makes sense. So that's what we had, just copied and pasted. Again, I, I can take those derivatives from the boxed information, and I can pop them in there. Yeah, I was thinking how much time that saves, because we would have had to write the whole thing again and replace it with the one half. <laughs> so we have the uh, constants put in, and then we put together some material. Like if you look and just group this part right here, because it kind of looks like the wave equation. So you group that one together, 
and you group these two together, they cancel out. But this one over here is zero. Pretty neat. So uh, it's really interesting looking at this thing. How could he have figured this out or just guessed? I mean, what was he, what was he doing? Did he run experiments first? Well, he was an experimentalist. So he didn't do that and come up with, oh, I think the solution should look like this. I, w I wonder if he was just playing around. So I don't think you can see the top. What it says is, what does this give us? Well, this UPQ equals 0. Well, I can integrate. And the first thing I realize is if I integrate with respect to q, because the derivative was 0, then I have a constant, but the constant ha could be a function of p. So that's the first observation. The second is if I integrate one more time, I'm going to be integrating this with respect to p, but then I could have a constant of integration with respect with q. So this is the constant of integration, and this is the antiderivative. So I can just, what that tells me is u is really a function of p and a function of q, the sum of the function of p and q. So I call that little f and little g to distinguish that you know, it's the sum of two arbitrary functions. And if I substitute p back in, I get it's really the function of x plus ct plus g uh, x minus ct. And really, that's giving us a special form of the solution. I'm debating on what, what to show you um, that's neat and fun and different. Um, because we have the stuff in the book. I'm taking the stuff in the book. I'll show you what page we are in the book. And I'm kind of going elsewhere because I feel like it's hard to read out of the book. So I wanted to find a better place to get information. But all of these changes of variables are group transformations from algebra, from abstract algebra. This is translation. So you're really looking at the dihedral group. It's really neat. It's abstract algebra. So maybe what we can do is do an abstract algebra thing um, where we're looking at some of these group transformations. And in fact, one of the equations can, has a Lie group transformation which transforms it from a nonlinear ugly PDE to a, the heat equation. It's one of the coolest things ever. So what this does is it gives us a special form of the solution. I, I think I mentioned to you before that um, my first advisor at Georgia Tech, he was somebody who just guessed special forms of solutions. So probably D'Alembert was of that Brand. He probably just played around and guessed. Okay, so now, um, of course, if we could find the form of that f of s and g of s, then I would be done. So it's kind of the same story as what we did when we looked at, um, we assumed that the special solution was a product, and it's the same idea. Well, I'm going to apply the initial condition. The initial condition u of x0 is equal to uh, phi of x. If I plug that in, it means that b of x is equal to f plus g. If I take the derivative with respect to t of x and t, um, I get this mess, and the c's come out from chain rule. And if I plug in 0, I get the relationship that um, there shouldn't be a zero over at the end, that c f prime minus c g prime is really psi. So I have a system of two equations, basically. But the problem is the first equation on the top that's boxed off has f's and g's, and the second equation has f primes and g primes. But I can take the derivative and come up with an equation with f prime and g prime and phi's and size, phi primes and size. This is the this was the relationship by plugging in the initial condition, and then if I take the derivative, right, I get this. So now I have two equations with two of them. And I actually was really annoyed because I wanted to throw this into Maple right away, even though it's easy. But I I gave up trying to find an online server that symbolically a computer algebra system. Sage will do it, right? If I is it a download? I download Sage onto no, my computer. it's actually run on a cloud. Server. Yeah. Okay, all right. I'll do it. If I'm lazy. <laughs> I always was. I used to make little mistakes. 
when I did my work. And so when I found out a computer would do the algebra for me, that was back in 1988, 89, somewhere, when Wolfram first came out with Mathematica. Like, I was there. I, I was already there. I was, I, I'm into it. <laughs> Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm just solving a system of equations by substitution. So I'm solving and resubstituting and plugging it in, and I get an expression. So I'm solving for f prime and g prime. I'm not using anything more than substitution. If you look over here, I was going to throw it into maple, and of course I don't have it, so I had to do it by hand so you see my messy work. And I get these two equations, f prime and g prime, are equal to these expressions. Well. So in step, step four, sub step two, I would just integrate to find the form of g and f. So if I integrate f, what do I get? Well, the integral of this is just, I'm going to put a dummy variable s in there. Integral of uh, phi is phi, of f, uh, phi prime is phi. Um, then the integral of this piece is right here. The c's cancel out. And then I have this integral, and I'm integrating from 0 to s with some dummy variable. And then I have a constant of integration a out there. So just integrate term by term. Good? And then I can do the same to g prime. So I get a g of s and an f of s, and each of them has a constant of integration. But if I plug in um, to the initial condition, or this is u of xt, now I have u of xt. That's the sum of these two things. So I just plugged them in. So that's my u of xt. Now I'm going to plug in the initial condition that um, when at t is 0, I get phi of x is equal to f of x plus g of x. And I apply that initial condition. And I get this purple equation over there. And what that tells me is a plus b must be 0. So that's gone. <laughs> I, I, things haven't been that easy for the last few weeks. So I'm like, this is nice, nice. So I have that. So that's the solution. So if somebody gives me the phi, I just integrate it and plug this in. So now we're going to take the solution all the way and graph it. I had to go to some that Wolfram's online, which is not as nice as Maple. That's what it looks like. It's trying to see like this is T, so here's the wave at this point going forward. It's really cool, isn't it? So when you guys do your work with um, with Dr. Nita, do you plot? Do you have plots like this? 